let's take a quick look at how to troubleshoot a hearing aid. You've been provided with a bag of supplies and in that bag are various things that are going to let you troubleshoot your hearing aid. So if I have a hearing aid that's not working, the first thing that makes sense to check is the battery. So again, I'm going to take the battery out, drop it on the table. If the battery stays there, I have a good battery. If the battery bounces, I have a bad battery. Sometimes you just get a bad pack right out of the gate, and so even though it doesn't make sense, you may just have a bad battery even though you don't think you should. If the battery bounces, go ahead and change it, and hopefully that will take care of your problem. If you have checked the battery and that's not the problem, the next thing you want to do is check the ear mold and you want to look in the ear mold to see if there's wax or debris in the opening that goes into the student's ear. There are a couple different ways you can clean an ear mold. One, you can use a wet wipe to simply wipe it. Or two, you can use one of these wax tools to clean the ear mold. The brush side will brush debris out and the pick side can be used to pick any wax or debris out. If neither of those works, then I would remove the ear tubing from the ear hook by pulling the two apart. Then I'm going to take this to a sink and I'm going to run warm water through this tubing until I see the water shoot out of the other opening and then I know I have flushed the whole tube clean. After I run water through it, I can use my blower to blow any moisture out of the tubing that may remain and then I can go ahead and reattach and see if that doesn't do the trick. Actually, to be honest, if the tubing is what is the problem, then as soon as I have removed the ear mold from the hearing aid, I should hear the hearing aid whistle again. So that's a good indication, again, that you have blocked tubing. Sometimes tubing is more difficult to change. For instance, some students, instead of an ear hook and tubing and ear mold, have a slim tube and a custom mold or a dome on the end. This whole piece um, is easily removed and replaced and you can see how narrow it is. It also easily becomes blocked and then needs to be changed. Most students who have this configuration of hearing aid have extra slim tubes in their box. You simply unscrew righty tighty left loose, unscrew this, screw a new one into the top until again you have that nice straight line and then you can replace the student's ear mold onto the end or the student's dome. And again, if they use a dome, they probably have other domes in their box. You just wanna make sure it is pressed firmly onto the end and then the hearing aid is likely to work again. So for a slim tube, it's a little different. You also will probably find in the student's box some of these little slim tube cleaners, which you can try to thread through the slim tube, easier said than done, okay, you can thread it, <laughs> definitely easier said, there it goes, you can thread it through the slim tube until it comes all the way out the end to clean it, but often I find that even after you thread it, that it still doesn't work, so often when these are um, plugged, you just simply need to replace them. If none of those, and again, the ear hook also screws back on, same way, righty tighty, lefty loose. Uh, it's a little difficult to get it started sometimes. Less so when you're not on camera. <laughs> there it goes, and it's, and it's back on. And of course, um, you always want to use uh, the listening tube that is provided to listen to the hearing aid. You simply Put it in your ear like a stethoscope, put the tube ending over the end of the hearing aid, and then I would say the ling sounds, ah, e, u, sh, m, s, and make sure that all of those sounds sound nice and crisp and clear. That will work with either configuration of tubing that you have on the end, um, and that's a nice way to check it if you don't feel comfortable doing the ling sounds for the student themselves while they're wearing it. Um, it's just a nice way for you to hear if there's any distortion, um, inside the hearing aid. And if you hear any distortion or if none of those things actually fixed your hearing aid, then of course you're going to want to call the educational audiologist that you work with.